Come ride the little train that is rolling down the tracks to the junction. Forget about your cares, it is time to relax at the junction. Lots of curves, you bet, and even more when you get to the junction. Petticoat Junction. There's a little hotel called the Shady Rest at the junction. Petticoat Junction. It is run by Kate. Come and be her guest at the junction. Petticoat Junction. And that's Uncle Joe. He's a moving kind of slow at the junction. Petticoat Junction. I'll get on the phone. On a phone that isn't connected? Yeah, let's not get ridiculous about this. But does the man from the bank know isn't connected? Like I said, you get at the desk, I'll get on the phone. My report will indicate the hotel is in excellent condition, considering its age, Mrs. Bradley. Oh, that's thrilling news, Mr. Bunce. But I'm afraid that's the only recommendation I can make to the bank about extending your loan. You just put a chill in the thrill. <laughs> What's that? Reservations for a family of six for two weeks beginning the 19th? Just a moment. Can we take care of them? We can't take anything from the 19th through the 30th. The grocer's convention will be here then. And they're out of luck next month. We're booked solid. Sorry, sir, but starting in a week, we're going to be so jam-packed around here, well, there won't even be standing room in the lobby. Mm -hmm. Oh, certainly. I think we can squeeze you in then. Just a moment. Reserve three rooms for the Finch family, 14 through 28, the month after next. Mr. Finch, your reservations have been confirmed, and I know you have a most enjoyable stay here at the... <laughs> oh, you know. Yes, young lady, I know. When I tried to make a call earlier, Mr. Carson explained it wasn't connected. <laughs> Good old dependable Uncle Joe. I believe he said he hung up there to give the place class. Oh, yes, sir, that's true. Uh, but also, I use it to practice speaking into. <laughs> I hope I didn't embarrass you too much. Oh, no, not a bit. Why, I always enjoy feeling like a complete idiot this time of day. Kate, Kate, I got great news. Guess who got off the cannonball? Mrs. Clara Watkins, the social leader of Watkins County. Uncle Joe, let's not... She and her son are coming up the hill right now, breathing money from every poor. Uncle Joe, you're wasting your time. Mrs. Watkins likes it here. Shady Rest could become the headquarters of the wealthiest people in these parts. Just think of all the money... Uncle that... Joe, please settle down. It's no use. Mr. Bunce won't go for it. <laughs> but don't feel bad. The girl's just struck out on a lollapalooza. <laughs> Mrs. Watkins is coming up the hill right now. And I might add, quite a climb. Well, they told me this wasn't much of a hotel, and they were right. Come on, Sonny. This little Victorian retreat appears to be just the place for you to do some serious thinking about yourself. I think a week here will prove relaxing, restful, and I feel painfully dull. Welcome to Shady Rest. We're honored to have you as our guest. Oh, yes, of course. A sign right here, Mrs. Watkins. Mrs. Watkins-Smith at the moment. I always sign my name in honor of my late husband. Oh, I see. I'm sorry. Uh, thank you, my dear. But when one loses as many husbands as I have lost, one becomes accustomed to it, and one does not look for sympathy. Oh. So what one looks for instead is another husband. No! <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> huh? Mrs. Clemmer, Watkins Smith. Before that, I was Mrs. Clara Watkins Carter, and then before that, I was Mrs. Clara Watkins uh, Hamilton. And once I married a distant cousin, and I was Mrs. Clara Watkins Watkins. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh dear. But that one only lived two months after I married him. What a pity. Yes, it was. Hardly worth the ceremony. <laughs> Yeah, well, um, I, I've, I've given you a dandy room. Our very best 
Right in the front of the hotel, Mrs. Watkins. Uh, uh... Oh, just Watkins will do. Uh, and give Sonny here a room not too far from me. Oh, number 10. That's bright and cheery. Got two windows in it. Sonny needs a, a tranquil atmosphere where he can reflect upon uh, himself and his future. This naughty boy has just been expelled from his sixth college. That's too bad. They say he's wild and uncontrollable. I'm sure it's true, but he certainly never acts that way when he's around me. Do you, Sonny? <laughs> no, Mummy. Here's your suitcases, folks. This here's the best-looking batch of alligator luggage we've ever carried on the cannonball. If them alligators had known it was going to look this good, they'd have walked out of the river right into the factory all by themselves. <laughs> Thank you, boys. Girls, will you show the folks to their rooms? Sure, Mom. This way, please. Well, was that her nibs herself, or was that her nibs? Yeah, it was her nibs, all right, Uncle Joe. More than likely, at one time, Mrs. Clara Watkins' nibs. <laughs> well, Mr. Bunce, how about it? Well, I must admit that having Clara Watkins as a guest here could have some uh, influence on my recommendation to the bank. Great. Now, you run over to that little old bank of yours and take care of the details. Hold on. Now, it's not quite that simple. What I mean is, it could make a difference to our bank if Mrs. Watkins were to recommend this place to her wealthy friends. <laughs> well, what's so funny, Bobby Joe? Tell me, Mom, do you believe in love at first sight? Well, I don't know. I guess so. Why? <laughs> well, I think Sonny Watkins believes in it, too, but I'm not too sure about Billy Joe. Well, what are you talking about? Oh, wait, wait, wait. Don't run away. Come here. Wait, Mr. Watkins. You can call me Sonny. Okay, Sonny, what do you say we talk about, all right? Mr. Butts? <laughs> How are you? Nice place you have here. <laughs> Sonny's cute, isn't he? Cute? Would you think so if he was annoying you? Please, Mom, don't even think of it. I can't run as fast as Billy Joe. <laughs> I must say, Mrs. Bradley, I find your food exceptional. It's rich. You might say it suits my taste. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm, I'm real glad you like it, Mrs. Watkins. Real glad. You've done it again. Romance blooms with the shady rest. Oh, lay off, will you? You're right, Betty Jo. Our big sister, the blonde bombshell of the shady rest, has added another gorgeous hunk of man to her long list of admirers. Oh, dry up. Her tremendous animal magnetism has attracted the attention of Jan Adonis, Sonny Watkins. Oh! oh knock it off, will you? you think that someday, Sonny and Billy, I'm going to count to three, and then I'm going to see if I still feel like becoming an only child? One, two, three! <laughs> I'll tell you what's new. I dig you. You're wild, baby. Wild. <laughs> You're so right. That's what I am. Wild. Wild, 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 wild. Here I go again. Wild right, old for your feet. Hey, wait up, will you? Good boy. The exercise will do wonders for you. <laughs> Oh, Miss Watkins, 
to your mattresses fresh turned and we hung up the rest of your things. Come, my pets, I have the most glorious news for you. Oh, yes, uh, Miss Watkins, what is it? Oh, I'm so glad I brought Sonny here to this earthly environment. It's beginning to bring him to his senses. Now, my Sonny is the last of the Watkins line. The Watkins strain has always been fragile. And now, Sonny is the last puny leaf on the family tree. Oh, I know, I have my work cut out for me. I have got to work to build him in body, mind and spirit to perpetuate the Watkins lineage so that eventually he can assume the leadership of the Watkins dynasty after I've relinquished it, of course. <laughs> I hope and trust that won't be for a long time, Mrs. Watkins. You can hope and trust and bet your municipal bonds it'll be a long time. <laughs> Now, now for the thrilling news. My sonny has fallen in love with your Billy Joe. Begging your pardon, Mrs. Watkins, but that doesn't startle us when a young man falls for Billy Joe. Yeah, she averages about one a week. Two in the summer when school's out. But she has never had a Watkins fall in love with her. No. I can't say that she has. <laughs> now, my dear, you're coming to your senses. Um, Miss Watkins, Sonny is a very nice boy. But, uh... <laughs> Mrs. Bradley, your daughter, Billy Jo, has the bone structure and the figure of a peasant. <laughs> now, just a minute. Oh, it's a lovely figure, my dear. Strong, durable, and incredibly healthy. Oh, she is the perfect creature to rebuild the Watkins family tree. Why, she could produce a flock of Watkins children with thicker bones and thicker blood and substantial bodies to match substantial minds to handle the real substance of life. Money. <laughs> well, yeah, well, Miss Watkins, we are going to have to settle... Something right here and now. Oh, no, my dear. Settlements come after the wedding, not before. <laughs> no, Mrs. Watkins, they come now. You see, I know my daughter, Billy Joe, and how she acts around boys. And I know what she thinks about Sonny. Oh, they could, they could be friends, good friends. But I'm sure that marriage is out of the question. Mrs. Bradley, no one. But no one rejects a Watkins in business or marriage and retains a relationship with us. Sonny and I are checking out of this anti-social, anti-financial, penny-ante environment immediately. Yeah, but, uh, <laughs> but, 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 we, we... Well, Uncle Joe, what next? I'll tell you what next. I'm going to sneak Ms. Watkins and Sonny out of the room. I'm going to check them out real quiet, and then I'm going to tell Mr. Bunce that they left raving about the place. I don't think you'll get away with it. <laughs> Neither do I. <laughs> oh, wait, Mr. Bunce. Can't you take a joke? But wait, I, I was only joking, old buddy. <laughs> Keith, you know there ain't really nothing wrong with marrying for money. Especially if it's a difference between saving a hotel. Uncle Joe, what are you saying? Well, what I'm saying is that uh, love and money go hand in hand, especially if you need it. Well, even to save the hotel, how could you think of Billy Joe marrying that boy? I ain't talking about that sweet child marrying that creepy kid. What I'm talking about is sweet old me marrying his creepy mother. <laughs> Just what is Uncle Joe up to, Mom? Yeah, he took the longest bath he's ever taken. He's wearing his best clothes and smells like he drenched himself with a gallon of lilac vegetal. <laughs> well, Joe isn't really serious about romancing Mrs. Watkins, is he, Mom? He better not be. If Uncle Joe married Mrs. Watkins, it would sure cut down on his life expectancy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 
Joseph, you're cute. Well, having you visit with us makes me feel cute. <laughs> when you're all dressed up, you're quite a figure of a man, Joseph. Well, thanks, Clara. I might say the same for you. Er, I, I mean, uh, quite the figure of a woman, I think. <laughs> oh, you, you romantic rascal. You're the type that can turn a girl's head. That's another great thing about you, Clara. Your youthful attitude. Oh, one is as young as one feels. I feel as young as the day I graduated from high school. In fact, I even have the same measurements. 48, 48, 48. Tremendous, Clara. That's tremendous. Like money in the bank. divine, my dear, just divine. Shall we try a foxtrot this time, my dear? Oh, that's a capital <laughs> idea, my pet. <laughs> Mom! Mom, have you heard? Did Uncle Joe tell you? What is it? What about Uncle Joe? Mr. Bunt said that Uncle Joe proposed to Mrs. Watkins last night, and she accepted. Oh, wow! No. Oh, that mad, noble, foolish, overage flirt. He's got it in his head that the only way to save us in the hotel is to marry that husband-hunting man-eater. Well, we can't let him do that. I know. Mrs. Watkins to do nothing but have Uncle Joe out working hard to make more money for her. Poor Uncle Joe. He's not used to work. And kill him. It'll probably be the shortest marriage in Mrs. Watkins' career. <laughs> I'm going to put a stop to it. And right now. Uncle Joe, you are not going to marry that woman. What do you think of this tie, Kate? Okay for a wedding? Uncle Joe, would you please listen to me? Oh, that's too somber. More for a funeral. <laughs> well, if you're going through with this wedding, that's the one to wear. Kate, who knows what the future holds in store for us? It is a far, far better thing I do now than I've ever done before. Can you stop reciting lines from old Ronald Coleman movies and come to your senses? I think I'll wear this one. Not that one you won't. <laughs> or any other, if I can help it. <laughs> so you see, Mrs. Watkins, with Uncle Joe so set in his ways and grumpy and cranky and so downright unwilling to do a lick of work, he had to be ashamed to marry a man like that. I appreciate your candor, my dear, but I'm looking forward to this marriage with Joseph. He's a challenge to me, perhaps my greatest... Up to now, I've only had one real challenge, and that was during my first marriage. Uncle Joe reminds you of your first husband. No, my first husband was no challenge at all. <laughs> Joseph reminds me of a bulldog who was given to me as a wedding present. Uncle Joe reminds you of a dog? Yes, he was cute and determined and strong-willed, just like Joseph. You know, it took me the better part of four weeks to break his spirit. <laughs> After that, I could handle him easily, just like I will. Joseph, now, don't worry, my dear. I'm going to make something of him if I have to run that adorable man right into the ground. <laughs> I see. That's real comfort and news, Mrs. Watkins. Real comfort and... I sure hope it works, Mom. Well, it's got to work, and I'm counting on three things to make it work. Floyd, Charlie, and Mrs. Watkins' greed. Do you think Charlie and Floyd can do it, Mom? Well, if they can't, I've wasted a basket of deep-fried chicken, two mince pies, and Uncle Joe's a goner. Floyd, I told you to stay away from here. I've got just as much right being here as you have. There they are. Come on. 
Now, come on, Floyd. Get out of here. I will not. You ain't beating my time. What is it, boys? What's going on? I've come a-courting Clara Watkins. And when I come a-courting, I wears my courting clothes. Special design for romantic walks. <laughs> Charlie ain't getting the best of me. I wore my army uniform. <laughs> sure thrilled them French mademoiselles back there in 1918. <laughs> and for extra insurance, I brought along my courting hair. <laughs> Oh, well, you look elegant, real elegant, both of you. But uh, I got unpleasant news for you. Mrs. Watkins is engaged to Uncle Joe. Of all the dang, dratted, infernal luck, the most enticing woman I ever laid my eyes on snatched right out from under my nose. And right out from under my courting hair. <laughs> yes, I, I, I know how disappointed you must be. If you think we're disappointed, wait till you see the hangdog look on the faces of them salesmen that spotted her on the train. They was a-figuring she was available for dating as soon as they got through with her selling. Well, I reckon the most we can hope for is to dance with her at the wedding. Well, goodbye, Kate, and goodbye, romance. Well, just a moment. Excuse me, everybody. I couldn't help overhearing a teeny weeny bit of your conversation, and I just didn't want you boys to leave with an erroneous impression. Mrs. Watkins, are you saying that you're not engaged to Uncle Joe? Well... Is that what you're saying, pretty lady? Are you saying there's a change for us? Please say there is. Yeah, down tootin'. And those salesmen, too. Oh, what I mean is, I've been thinking it over, and I think I'm too young to tie myself down right now. I think I should stay uh, loose, so to speak. What happened my fling? Wait, Clara, what are you saying? You can't back out now. You'll break my heart. This hotel, everything. Oh, Joseph, I'm sorry. I've reconsidered, and the answer is no. I was caught up in a mad whirl of heady country air, and I made a wild, impulsive decision. Forgive me. Listen, Clara, even though we ain't getting hitched, could you see your way clear to make me a little alone? Why, Joseph? What's the problem? Well, it's quite simple, Mrs. Watkins. Without your patronage, my bank will be forced to close down this hotel. Oh? Uh -huh. What bank do you represent? The Pixley National Bank and Trust. Do you know it? Know it. I own it. <laughs> you, uh, own it? Young man, in these parts, any business with the word bank in it, I own it. <laughs> yes, uh, yes, uh, yes ma'am, Mrs. Watkins, I, uh, I should have known. If you ever dreamt of extending a loan, you will extend it to this hotel. I wouldn't let this little playground close down for a million dollars. Yes, ma'am. Of course, Mrs. Watkins. <laughs> Mrs. Watkins, what can I say? How can I thank you? Just say you're going to have a little dancing here tonight. And invite those salesmen I had him out. That will be adequate. See you tonight, Clara. It'll be every man for himself. Now you're talking. <laughs> I'll see you tonight. It's time for my little beauty nap. I wonder it can be. Well, girls, we just saw Mom solve one mighty big problem with one dandy little idea. She's really something. Uh, but tell me, Billy Joe, uh, what are you going to do about your big, hot, sizzling romance with Sonny? You're going to need an awful big idea to solve that one. <laughs> Uh, didn't I tell you? I solved it. <laughs> Sonny, Sonny. <laughs> there she is. Oh, your sister explained that you're more my type, and I agree. Now, wait a minute, Sonny. Oh, we share I... the same interests. Astrology, stamp collecting, Wiener schnitzel. Astrology, stamp collecting, Wiener schnitzel? Oh, oh Billy, Bobby, show you here. Uh, wait a minute. Back, fella, back. Now, listen, we'll no, talk about it later. We'll see you around, huh? We... I really think you're a nice guy, but later. <laughs> oh, for crying out loud, where are you going? to get my track shoes. <laughs>
Junction. This has been a Filmways presentation.